Now, the mother of a newborn baby who died at a birthing centre run by midwives has told this programme staff ignored her concerns. An inquest last week ruled that if Kate Stanton-Davis had been born at a normal hospital rather than a unit run solely by midwives, she would have survived. The case has raised some serious questions about the government's support for the so-called midwife-led birthing centres. Here's our health and social affairs correspondent, Victoria MacDonald. This is one of the few photos her parents have of Kate Stanton Davis. They thought they would have a lifetime to take others. Instead, their baby girl died six hours after birth. And on Friday, an inquest jury found that being born at a local midwife-led maternity unit contributed to her death in 2009. Seven men, two women, sat there and listened to eight days of harrowing detail of Kate's last two weeks of her life and the six hours that she was with us and came to the unanimous decision that there were drastic errors yes. at, at all levels that could have been avoided, should have been avoided, and contributed to the death of Kate. Rhiannon Davis gave birth here at Ludlow Community Hospital. Yet in the two weeks before Kate was born, Rhiannon had undergone a series of tests because of concerns she had that something was wrong with the baby. Only now do they know that Kate had hemorrhaged while in the womb a transfusion before or immediately after birth could have saved her, but nobody picked it up. Most importantly, Rhiannon should never have been sent to Ludlow. She was not low risk. When Kate was born at the maternity unit here, she was pale and floppy. Yet, the inquest heard she was put into a cold cot and left alone while the midwife went about her routine tasks. Even when she began grunting, which is a sign of respiratory failure, nothing was done. It took two hours from the moment she was born for an ambulance to be called. To add to the chaos and air, ambulance was sent, but the helipad at Shrewsbury Hospital was closed. It then headed for Birmingham Children's Hospital, where there was no emergency neonatal unit. It finally arrived at Heartlands Hospital, but had to land in a field because their helipad was closed. Yeah. Kate's parents had to make their own way. They were frantically calling hospitals to find out where their baby was. But Rhiannon became ill and had to be taken to another hospital. Only Richard arrived in time to hold Kate in his arms as she died. We were told by the West Midlands Ambulance Service that we'd had an unsatisfactory experience. Um, and I can categorically say that losing your daughter six hours after birth, dying in my arms, um, is not an unsatisfactory experience. It's a life-changing experience. I ended up in a different hospital and I wasn't there when she died. And that, for me, is the hardest thing that I have to live with. I couldn't do anything. I, I tried to tell people that there was something wrong with her before she was born. I tried to tell them after she was born. I couldn't do anything for her. I couldn't even be there when she died. In a statement, they said the air ambulance took only 15 minutes to get Kate to Heartlands. Tragically, the evidence clearly showed that Kate could not have survived by the time the ambulance was called. It also emerged that breathing tubes on board were damaged and couldn't be used on Kate. Changes have now been made in the way they're stored. And when Kate arrived at Heartlands, all the doctor was given was a slip of paper with the mother's name and Kate's birth weight. The government wants there to be more midwife-led maternity units, but what happened to Kate is raising fundamental issues about their safety, about the training of midwives, and especially about what happens in rural areas when it can take a long time to reach help. And there are questions too about the length of time it took Kate's family to get answers. Dr. Karen Morton works for the clinical commissioning group responsible for local health care from next April. The main thing that struck us as a CCG and that struck me personally was how long it had taken for the relatives to have their voice heard and for them to understand what had happened to their baby and what, what the care could have looked like. And as a CCG we're committed to ensuring that uh, the process is much smoother, it's much quicker and relatives and patients get answered um, in a more timely fashion. The Trust offered their sympathy and said we will now be taking the time to reflect on the jury's findings and the helpful comments made by the coroner throughout this complex and thorough inquest. In April, Isabella was born, of course, to the joy of her parents. But it's a sign of the damage done, perhaps, that Rhiannon says she's now taken more than 2,000 pictures of her to compensate for the one photo they have of Kate. 
a shattering account of medical failure. Victoria MacDonald reporting.